Hi, welcome back to the Historic Nerd. Today's episode is about Missile Command, a game that, for all intents and purposes, is a relatively simple premise, an unwinnable scenario where players shoot down incoming ballistic missiles that pretty much never end. But the game, in a way, perfectly encapsulated the culture of the 1980s, with the sense that the Cold War was in full swing, it seemed like an unwinnable scenario and the Soviet Empire would never go away. So for me, it's a game that resonates very much with my childhood, when you go to an arcade and play with that gigantic trackball. I still like trackballs. Yep. <laughs> and cover. Originally, Missile Command was supposed to be a Cold War-themed game, but what ended up happening was, while Atari was developing the game, lead designer David Thurr ended up going home having horrific nightmares about cities being destroyed in atomic blasts because the game originally had the player defending six cities in California. But its greatest threat will be from space. The intercontinental ballistic missile traveling above the atmosphere at speeds of almost five miles per second. As a result of David Thurr's horrific nightmares, Atari backpedaled on the concept of the Cold War game and quickly kind of rushed in a random sci-fi theme of the planet Crypto and Zardon fighting one another. But the only mention of this is actually made for the home version. The arcade version actually has no reference of any of these. The game Missile Command was extremely popular, and it's definitely earned its place among other Golden Age classics. What sets the game apart, however, is its abstract realism. Because if you think about it, the opening shots of the Cold War, if it had gone hot, would have been fought on radar screens all across the globe. But shortly after that, after the nuclear war happened, it probably would have descended something along the lines of Mad Max. But moving on. What I mean by abstract realism is, if you take the abstract, nondescript background from Missile Command and then import a map of the United States, you end up with a really eerie situation of defending this country from incoming missiles. And that kind of defense screen looks oddly similar to something you might see in the movie War Games or Dr. Strangelove. Atari Anonymous, my son Boris has a Missile Command problem. My mission in life is to save all of mankind. One thing that's always stood out in my mind when playing Missile Command is that when you fire a missile from your counter battery at an incoming enemy ICBM, your explosion is actually larger than the missile when it hits your city. And when you think about that, it kind of brings a whole new realism to it, considering that the United States' defense strategy, at least initially against fighting the Soviets' incoming missiles, was to use more nuclear weapons to take out their nuclear weapons. And it's made very real to you when you realize the United States had a defense treaty with Canada that allowed us to detonate nuclear weapons over their territory. I guess in this situation it kind of sucks to be America's hat. Called upon to produce a new missile to have a range more than three times greater than Ajax, and the ability to carry a nuclear warhead. What always surprised me about Missile Command was how much it actually got right. You remember those moments in the game when you'd have that one missile come in and then it would fragment and break into multiples? That's actually a real thing nuclear missiles do. Duck and cover. Fun fact about American and Soviet ICBMs. Even though you only see one rocket go aloft, you actually have on that single rocket about 10 to 20 warheads, capable of individually targeting separate cities. A rather terrifying thought. But it's also really surprising that Missile Command got it right, considering it was in the 80s before this information was even really public. Let me get a little more random in my comparison of Missile Command to the actual Cold War. If you take a look at the actual number of warheads the United States and Soviet Union had, the United States was sitting around 2,100 deployable nuclear weapons during the Cold War, at least for parts of it. The number got a bit higher. And this is warheads capable of being loaded on ICBMs. The Soviets were about the same. And what's really interesting about this whole thing is that both countries decided to sign a treaty limiting the number of interceptor missiles they could use to just 100 a country. So the United States, taking this strategy rather poorly, decided that they would put all the missile interceptors randomly around the country, where the Soviets actually decided to put all of theirs around Moscow, making the plot to Moscow Metro 2033 actually possible, meaning that people could survive. And now, in the space age, a potential answer to the threat of the ICBM, Nike Zeus. But like I said, Missile Command does have its place among the 1980s classics. In a way, the game parallels the 1980s and the Cold War to its ultimate end that most people feared would happen. But thankfully, cooler heads prevailed and the conflict never occurred. But interestingly enough, if an actual full-scale missile defense screen had been created, it actually probably would have prompted a war because if it had actually been a successful missile screen, both sides would have feared the balance of power shifting towards whoever had the better missile screen. 
So it's kind of a good thing that we didn't, because it probably would have made them scared that one side would strike the other. But luckily it didn't. Strange game. The only winning move is not to play.